Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar session on marine simulations. My name is Mario de Souza. I'm a pre sales engineer with Maya HGT. I've had more than six years of experience with SimCenter Star CCM Plus for automotive, healthcare, electronics, cooling, and marine applications. With me is Cyril Chakis, who is our designated support and pre sales engineer. He has had a lot of experience as well with SimCenter Star CCM Plus in the automotive sector, marine sector, um, conjugate heat transfer analysis, and external aerodynamics. And we both will be your presenters for today. Before we begin, let me give you a brief introduction to Maya HTT. Maya HTT is a software driven engineering solutions provider. We have been awarded this, uh, the number one worldwide partner for Siemens. We are passionate engineers. 75% of our staff are scientists and engineers. We are recognized worldwide for our multi physics simulation solutions. Our engineers have sought after hands on experience in almost every industrial sector. We have not only developed more than 30 software modules for Siemens, we are also now known worldwide and have millions of users for our multi physics simulation solutions. We help our clients put satellites into space, reduce energy consumption of data centers, help them design zero emission vehicles. Basically, we help you find better ways of doing engineering. We are with you from the beginning to the end. We help you with we, we help you to design and deliver products faster to market. We help you speed up development till time and reduce costs with efficient iterations, streamlined workflows and virtual product models. We help you with simulations. We help you get your model right, your virtual model right before you go ahead and build your physical prototype. We can help you with manufacturing as well. We can help you optimize your planning to shop floor to off all your shop floor processes. We can address all your machining needs from simple NC programming to precision multi axis machining with and all of this within a one com, within a single comprehensive system. We can help you with Internet of Things and Applied AI, software and application development, automation and optimization as well. Lastly, we can help you tie this all together with our product lifecycle management tools. So far, we have had more than 150 PLM. We have executed more than 150 PLM projects, including multi-site and multi-CAD implementations. So today, I'm going to take you across the marine simulation capabilities within Star CCM Plus. Before we begin, let's address the challenges which our marine industry faces currently. One of the most obvious challenges in the marine industry is that we have to handle thousands of parts and the process can be confusing, repetitive and difficult to do. This results in a workflow that is inefficient. Nowadays, it's very common for marine engineers to use multiple software tools to get results from a single simulation. They'll be given there'll be a single tool for CAD cleanup, another for meshing, another for solving, and another for post processing. Such tasks they result in disconnected processes. What I mean to say is that any changes in the CAD, for example, will not will not go further. It will not be um, seen in the mesh and the boundary conditions and so on. This often leads to organizations developing their own scripts, which are generally valid for a given release. The scripting is not limited to just processes, but also multi physics simulations. For example, if it's a FSI analysis of a propeller, we have a separate tool for CFD simulations and another separate tool for structural simulations, and they need to be connected often via file transfer. This, this goes ahead and leads to inefficiencies and slow solve times. We know that disconnected processes limits engineers to analyze a given problem and hinder optimizations. Essentially, if I were to sum up all the sum up all these challenges due to size and complexity of the model, marine engineers spend more time to build the CFD model than analyzing results. Exploring the design space, it's not even considered. Star CCM Plus is designed to counter all these traditional problems. The philosophy here is to discover better designs faster. 
So the agenda for today's session is going to be firstly, I'm going to begin by introducing star CCM plus to you. Next, we will have a deeper dive into the CFD simulations for vessel performance. That is hydrodynamic, aerodynamic and lastly propulsion systems. We will have a live demonstration by Cyril, who is an expert in the marine simulations on resistance analysis. And we are going to show you a model of the KCS hull. We will also have a look at the design manager and we'll understand the advantages of using a design manager which is embedded within star ccm plus we will then jump in jump into advanced simulation capabilities uh, which can be addressed using our tool lastly we will have a discussion about the next steps and go ahead all right let's begin before i begin let me give you an elevator pitch to what simcenter star is SimCenter Star CCM Plus is a CFD focused multi physics engineering solution that uniquely integrates comprehensive physics with intelligent design space exploration in a single CAD to solution environment. It's built for the most simple to the most advanced CFD sim simulation needs. From this pitch, the first thing that I want to highlight is it's a single integrated environment. All stages of simulation that is pre solving and post are done in a single environment. Within this single environment, you have an automated workflow. What this means is that once you have built your first simulation file, you can automatically update your design changes without much effort. The first two points focus on how SimCenter Star CCM Plus is built to reduce engineering time. The third capability of SimCenter Star CCM Plus is really focused on model realism by bringing a very comprehensive range of physics models. Single scenario engineering simulations are about to become a thing of the past. CFD engineers have expanded their capabilities to more than just troubleshooting a given design problem to finding the optimum design solution in the design space. With SimCenter Star CCM Plus, design exploration is a fully integrated component of the platform. SimCenter Star CCM Plus, it's parallelized from CAD to solution, and it can be scaled across hundreds or even thousands of cores. And we have a very flexible licensing scheme, giving the best bang for your buck. For the next section, I will focus on the use of CFT simulations for analyzing and optimizing ship design performance. We can classify improving ship performance into three main categories. Hydrodynamic performance, that is anything to do with the interaction of the free surface between water and air and the structure. Aerodynamic performance, that is interaction of the structure above the water, that is with air. Propulsion systems, that is analyzing drive mechanism beyond just propellers, but also simulating the performance of the systems associated with it. The focus of any of these would, would be analyzing and optimizing the performance of these systems to drive two main factors. One being the cost reduction through increase in operational efficiency, and the second one being meeting environmental regulations. Some of the applications are in the hydrodynamic performance section are wake optimization, hull resistance and power, noise and vibrations, cavitation and erosion, sea keeping analysis, and so on. Now, in general, most hydrodynamic simulations is limited to hull resistance and power analysis. However, due to decreasing cost of computational power, increasing efficiency of CFD simulations, and access to advanced CFD simulation capabilities, such as the adaptive mesh refinement and the overset mesh, these are a few to name, we can now include more complex motions and physical processes. This allows us to analyze full scale vessel under real operating conditions like running sea keeping, maneuvering and steering analysis. And these would have been the and these are impossible to do in a physical tow tank, but can be achieved with SimCenter Star CCM Plus. Now let's jump into the aerodynamic performance in which we can analyze wind loading, helideck safety, exhaust gas dispersion, superstructure drag and so on. Generally, when talking about aerodynamic, superstructure drag is what we think of. But with new regulations and the need for being more environmental friendly, emission tracking is becoming something our customers are very keen on analyzing. This 
can be this all can be analyzed and then the design can be improved to meet objectives. Lastly, we have propulsion system performance. We can do everything related to propulsion systems. As we know, propeller performance is key for energy efficiency. We can look at the propulsion system performance from propeller in isolation, but also the performance with subsystems and then with the full system performance. So up to now, I have been able to show you nearly every aspect of aerodynamic, propulsive and hydrodynamic performance, which can be analyzed using our simulation SimCenter Star CCM Plus. In the upcoming slides, we are going to jump we are going to jump deep into the hull resistance studies. So let's get into it. We have one such workflow which we call the application productivity tool or the APT tool, which we have and it's for the virtual tow tank template, which is a specialized tool for carrying out resistance, sink and trim analysis. It is designed to be used by even a non CFD expert and as well as experienced CFD engineers. From geometry to the solution and post-processing using the VTT template, you can go just within a few clicks and then just in a matter of five to 10 minutes. And also it at the last, it goes ahead and dumps a PowerPoint presentation with all your results in it. The VTT template uses the multi-mesh sequencing scheme. And to give you some perspective, before Cyril goes ahead and shows you the VTT template, I would like to explain how the meshing and solving occurs and what is MMS and multi-mesh sequencing and why is it better than the traditional methods. Typically, calm water resistance cases are solved on a constant mesh for the duration of time. The mesh is commonly expressed as a ratio of the vessel length deemed that a sufficient trade-off has been done between the accuracy and the computational time. This constant mesh described above in the traditional method can be thought of as the final mesh in the MMS approach. Prior to that, a number of coarser meshes are sequenced across and convergence is achieved at each level. Following the convergence at a given level, the vessel is updated to the current solved position and remesh has been and, and it, it is remeshed according to the grid resolution of the next level. The benefits of this approach are that the motion can be converged prior to reaching the final grid resolution. Numerical noise after initialization is convected through the domain in less computational time, as well as the vessel position is updated between each level. The grid remains aligned with the free surface. And the benefit of this being using the traditional method of the constant mesh method for for four velocities to extract the resistance curve, it took us four hours and 40 minutes. And using the MMS for the same four velocities, it took us one hour and 50 minutes, which is two time, 2.5 times faster. So not only it is easy to set up the resistance analysis using the VTT template, which we will be showing shortly, but it's also a lot, lot faster. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Cyril to show us the hull resistance demo. Thank you, Mayu. We are now in the Star CCM Plus client. I took the liberty to open two cases uh, here. So one being the empty version of the virtual to tank template. So on this one, we'll use this one to uh, set up the simulation and uh, we won't be running it because it would take too much time. But what I'll do instead is show you most of the content within the template. So what's actually happening in the background. And once we'll be done with that, I'll open the second simulation, which is just there. So this one contains a set of results and I'll use it to show you what can what we can get out of the template in terms of post processing. So if I go ahead and open the instructions for the template, you can see that the virtual tank, virtual total tank template, sorry, serves as a baseline simulation file and requires users to simply import their CAD in the correct axis convention, which is step one before specifying the required draft, velocity, and free properties in step two. So if I go ahead and import the geometry, you can see that the geometry gets displayed on this window here. 
that the axis convention is correct as the x axis is going towards the bow, the z axis is going upward, and the y axis is, is going towards the port side. At the same time, our ship's dimension have been updated in the window, so the length, the width, and the depth of the ship. Now, before importing the ship in the template, you'd be good to make sure that your geometry is actually clean, that there is no pierced faces or any non-manifold edges. If that's not the case, you can still go through the surface repair and repair your geometry, or if there are too many issues, you can also wrap the geometry. We won't do any of that in this video. We'll just assume that the geometry is clean and we just go ahead with the rest of the setup. So the step two is going to be to set up our parameters. So we can input the scale here, so I can make the ship twice as big, for example. Again, you can see that the ship's dimension are getting updated. We can change the fluid properties, so we can change the water type, for example, from seawater to freshwater. Both our density and dynamic viscosity are getting updated. I can decide to change the temperature as well of the water, so from 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. And again, both our density and dynamic viscosity are getting updated accordingly. That is because we've got two sets of tables within the template. Uh, one for each water type, which contains temperature, density, and dynamic viscosity. So whenever you're going to change your water type or temperature, it's going to interpolate the data for the density and the, dy and the dynamic viscosity. Uh, again, these tables can be modified, or you can import your custom ones. Now, the only parameters left to enter are the draft, which is going to be named input T in the template. This is going to define our water level and the actual shift velocity. So we can change it to nine nodes. Now, you'll notice that in here we've got a warning telling us to keep the float number below 0.4. So that is particularly important because this template is only adapted to low speed ship resistance simulation. Now, if you wanted to run a higher speed resistance simulation, you'd need to use a different template which uses the overset mesh technology to accommodate for the larger motion of the ship, as well as the adaptive time step refinement and the adaptive mesh refinement to accommodate for the larger motion of the free surface. Now that we've completed step one and two, the setup is complete and the only step left is to submit our simulation. And for this particular template, we're using the simulation operation workflow for that. So that can be executed to mesh and run the simulation file by clicking on this button. And all operations and objects are pre-populated already with dynamic queries and filters within the template, which allows the whole workflow to be automated. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I won't run the simulation in this case, but instead I'm going to show you what's happening within the template. And just before I do so, I'd like to precise that the whole template can be fully modified and adapted to your needs based on previous experiences or in-house best practices. So if I go ahead and open our geometry slash mesh operations, I can see that straight away I've got a scale volume boxes here. So this one is scaling our domain and our mesh refinement zones based on the ship's dimension. Then uh, we've got here a transform operation, which is relocating the ship uh, with regards to the water level that we've defined. Then we've got an intersection here, so this is intersecting the water level with the ship's geometry in order to create a part called the underwater hull. And this part is being meshed just after with this meshing operation. This part is actually not going to be simulated within the simulation, but uh, we're using it in order to get our hydrostatics calculation, such as the displacement and the center of buoyancy. Then we've got another transform operation here, which is actually relocating the ship in the correct coordinate system for the simulation. Then we have a subtract here, which is subtracting the ship from the domain in order to create our free domain. And then we're meshing our free domain here. Moving forward, we've got continuous and regions here. So the continuous in Star CCM Plus are the collections of physics models which are going to be solved for our case. And the regions are 2D surfaces or 3D volumes that are discretized. So whenever you have a part and you mesh it in Star CCM Plus, it becomes a region. So straight away you can see that we've got dummies for both the continua and the regions. That is because we have previously created our underwater hull part, and that this part 
as I mentioned, is not simulated. It's just used for hydrostatics calculation. Now, because we've actually meshed a part, it needs to be associated with a region, and every region in star CCM plus also needs to be associated to a continua. So don't pay too much attention to these two. We'll just focus straight away on the actual continua of the virtual tow tank. Now you can see that we're solving for a 3D space as well as an, un an unsteady uh, time discretization. We're using the volume of fluid method here because we want to accurately uh, model the free surface between the water and the air. And for that, we're using the segregated flow solver as well as the Cape Sinus turbulence model. In terms of initialization, we're using the Wolf Waves model. So in Star CCM Plus, there are different Wolf Waves model that you can use. In this template, we're using the flat Wolf Wave, which is used to replicate a calm free surface. But we also have different models, such as the first order Wolf Wave, which is used to replicate a linear or sinusoidal wave. We also have the fifth order wave model, which is used to simulate non-linear non waves. And we also have more complex models, such as the superposition model, which uh, is a linear addition of two or more first order waves. And that is usually uh, used to uh, replicate a more real life C state condition. Uh, and we also have the irregular Wolf wave, which describes a short term C state. But as I mentioned in this template, we're using the flat wave. Now, having a look at the region, so this is our fluid region here. And in terms of boundaries, we've got our ship boundaries as well as our domain boundaries, which are defined. And now having a look at our motion solver. So in this case, we're using what we call a DFBI, so a dynamic fluid body interaction model, which is solving the motion of the ship based on the forces applied on it by the water. So in this case, we're using a six degree of freedom solver. And out of the six degree of freedom, we're only actually solving for the heave and the pitch, which is why we've got only the set motion and the Y rotation being enabled here. Now we can also define our dynamic settings right there. So for the center of mass, the moment of inertia, velocity, but also the body mass. Now, one thing that wasn't necessarily obvious when I imported the geometry is that we only going to solve for half the ship's geometry in order to reduce the computational uh, time. So that is why if you have a look at the boundaries, we also we actually have a symmetry plane which is located right at the center line of the of the ship. And that is also why uh, so the center of mass is going to stay the same, but the moment of inertia as well as the body mass are going to be divided by two. Now you'll notice that the body mass is based on our displacement calculation, which is why we've actually got this uh, hydrostatic part which has been created. In terms of stopping criteria within this template, the convergence criteria are judged based on physical parameters such as the motion of the boat, so for the heave and the pitch, as well as the total resistance. Which means that every time that these convergence criteria are going to be met, we're going to move on to the next level of mesh refinement, as, uh, as Mario just described before in the slides. And this process is actually controlled within the uh, simulation operation workflow. So, the simulation operation workflow allow you to define operations in order to automate a workflow without having to use Java macros. So in this case, the workflow that's being predefined for you is that it sets parameters based on your geometry import. Then it sets the meshing parameters based either on the first parameters that were defined or again on the geometry import. Then it meshes the geometry, sets the stopping criteria, and then it solves the geometry at the first level of mesh refinement. Then we actually enter the loop of mesh sequencing where we are just refining the um, mesh parameters before remeshing the geometry and resolving the geometry again. So this is actually going to happen five times and at the very at the fifth time when the stopping criteria are going to be converged, then the simulation is going to stop. And so now that this has been, uh, now that we've been through the actual 
workflow within the template, I'm just going to go ahead and open the second case where we actually have a set of results and uh, see what we can get out of that in terms of uh, post processing. So whenever it comes to post processing in Star CCM Plus, we've got four folders which are particularly useful. You've got the reports here. So the reports uh, allow you to create expressions in order to calculate solution data and they return the scale out to you. So that can be used for both pre and post processing. So in this case, we've got calculations for the mesh, for the fluid properties, for the hydrostatics. Again, this is where we calculate our displacement and center of buoyancy based on the underwater hole part. And then in terms of post-processing, we've got the forces applied on the ship, so the body force and body moment. We've got the motion, so the, the heave and the pitch of the ship. Uh, then we've got the actual pressure resistance as well as the shear or friction resistance. Uh, we've got the total resistance here, which is going to be the sum of our pressure and shear resistance. Then we've got an average value of the resistance over the last 400 samples. And we also have here the maximum velocity within the case. Now, we also have a folder called monitors. So the monitors compute every single report or any, any data uh, of the simulation at every time step. And you can use this computation to display them uh, uh, by plotting them. So in this case, we can display again the forces applied on the ship. So we've got the force here and the moment here. We've got the resulting motion in here. So you can see that our pitch and heave have uh, pretty well converged. Then we also have the multi mesh sequencing progress here. So as Mario described, you've got the five level of mesh refinement, which are in red there. And we can also have the cell count according to this uh, mesh sequencing. So we have here the number of cells. Uh, so we start with 150,000 cells, then it goes up to 300,000, 600,000, 1.3 million, and 3 million cells. So we roughly have a factor of two in between each level of mesh refinements. Then we can also display the resistance. So the red dotted line here is going to be our total resistance updated at every time step. The blue line is going to be the same resistance, but only updated at every motion of the ship. And we have the average over the last 400 samples in green. I can also plot the contribution of the pressure and shear uh, for the resistance. And I can also plot the total time that the simulation took to run. So for me, as you can see, it took five hours to run, but I was only using six cores on my machine. Now, for such a simulation, you wouldn't be looking to use six cores. It would be, um, I mean, the best practice would be to be using between 20 and 30 cores. So as a, as a reference case, Siemens uh, run their industrial test case on 30 cores and it took about 36 minutes to converge. And then I can also display the maximum velocity being present in the domain just to make sure that everything is running smoothly and that my simulation is robust. Now the last folder that's very important for post-processing are the scenes. So the scenes allow you to display 2D surfaces or 3D volumes and apply scale on them. So I can display, for example, the mesh here. So obviously it's only going to display the very last level of mesh refinement, uh, which is our 3 million cell mesh. So in this case, I can, we can see that straight away I've got refinement zones around the free surface. Uh, if I zoom on the front of the boat, I can see I've got the mesh refinement zone as well around the front of the ship. And there we have our prism layer or boundary layer mesh around the ship. And if we have a look at the back of the ship, we also have additional refinement zones around the, the back of the ship, as well as the Kelvin wake refinements to capture the wake correctly. Now, we can also display the hydrostatics of the ship here. So in this case, we can have the center of buoyancy and the displacement data as well that are being displayed. We can also display the free surface of the ship. So we've got uh, different free surfaces 
within the within the model. So we've got a free surface model which is there. We also have a different way of displaying it by plotting the free. So this is actually an ISO surface of the water level here, and it is displaying the, the velocity of the water. So that's a bit more like water rendered. And we can also plot the free surface throughout a top view here. So this one is a bit more talkative in terms of surface elevation. Now, one thing that's good in Star System Plus is that we can also plot a scene and a plot side by side to actually get a better insight of what is happening and what the plot is actually uh, describing. So if I plot our free surface on the left and the waterline along the hull on the right, so on this plot, we have the red dotted line, which is a waterline along the entire domain. And in blue, that's the waterline along the hull. So the, the front of the hull is located in one and the back of the hull is located in zero. So obviously, as the water is hitting the ship, we get a surface elevation here. And as the wave is forming, we get the surface elevation, which is going down. Right behind the back of the boat, we've got a massive surface elevation. As, uh, as one might expect. And we also get the kind of sinusoidal wake behind uh, the boat. Now I can also display the pressure coefficient. Again, as you'd expect, as the water is hitting the front of the ship, we get a uh, static pressure region appearing here. I can display the wall shear stresses as well. So, I mean, again, as the water hits the front of the ship, this is where most of the friction happens. And I can display the wall Y plus. So the wall Y plus is a, is a value used to characterize your boundary layer mesh. And in this case, we've got as well the average wall Y plus, which is written within the scene. So we can say that uh, because this value is not contained between 5 and 30, which is our buffer region, we can safely say that our boundary layer mesh is quite robust for this type of application. I can also display some streamlines to see how the water is actually flowing along the ship. And there also are some weight cuts here that can be quite useful in order to get the surface elevation as well as the behavior of the of the water throughout these vectors here. So they are, there are multiple weight cuts throughout the entire domain that you can have a look at. Right, so that covers pretty much the whole content of the template. So before passing it back to Mario, I'd like to say that everything that I've shown you today is fully, um, fully automated and included within the template, apart from this layout view, which I'm just deleting right now. So everything else was fully part of the template. So you can see that roughly within 40 to 45 minutes, including the setup and the running time, if you use 30 cores, you can get your post-processing ready to be displayed and analyzed. So with that, I pass it back to you, Mario. Thank you. Cyril took us through how to use the VTT template for a hull resistance simulation and how that how you can achieve this in a very easy and a very efficient manner. So using the VTT template, we can run it for one particular velocity, but to extract the resistance curve of a vessel, you would want to run the simulation for multiple velocities. So to understand the basically the drag of the vessel, uh, what we have is within Star CCM Plus we have the Design Manager, which is an embedded tool within within the tool itself. So over here, what we do is we use the base case which Cyril ran using the VTT template, and that's what I'm going to show you to begin with. So over here we have the initial file, which has been run for a single velocity. Let's go ahead and look at the parameters that we have we have the vessel velocity which was initially run at eight knots and this is our baseline case we can see that when we import the simulation file uh, for the baseline case we have the reports which is our numerical data we have the scenes which are our visualization temp visualization windows as well as the plots to basically observe the numerical data on the screen. So all of these are imported into the design manager project and all of these will be replicated in the upcoming design studies. So you don't have to recreate them. It's all carried forward. Next, 
I would like to show you the type of design studies that we have. So over here, I've already created a design study, which is a sweep study, but we have manual studies, DOE, optimization, which uses the famous Sherpa algorithm uh, to run an optimization study, but we have also CAD robustness and so on. In this case, we have run a design sweep on the initial simulation file or the base simulation file that we have. If you look at the design table, which we have considered over here, you can see that the baseline design, which is marked as design one, which was run at eight knots, and then we have increments of two knots until 16 knots. And these are the five designs which we are going to run using the design manager. All right, so let's have a look at the results. In the results, what we have is layout views, basically having multiple windows on the same screen so that you get a better understanding of all the all the parameters that you have. On the top window over here, what you can see is the design table. You can see your input that is velocity, which is 4.11 meter per second, which translates to eight knots and the other designs, which is up to 16 knots in our last case. So you can see all the results that is pitch heave. You can see the total resistance over here and so on. So all the parameters which you would like to uh, import from your base file, you can import them and you can plot them on a table just like this. And you can see that all these designs have been completed over here. You can see over here at the bottom. Over here you can see the resistance go, which we have plotted. That is basically velocity versus the total resistance value. So you can see it has been plotted for different velocities, 8, 10, 12, and 16. So these scenes are very interactive by what I mean is that on clicking the next design, the scene gets updated, the design table on the top reflects, and also the pitch of the vessel as well as the heave gets updated on this scene. So you can see that we have the heave on the left vertical axis and pitch on the right and the vessel velocity over here. So these scenes are very much interactive and it's pretty intuitive to use as well. As well as the visualization windows, it is uh, dynamic, so you can see different design changes being done as you go through your design table and the results getting reflected in this window over here. All right, so another feature which I would like to show you is the use of the design manager to compare designs. So over here we have the same vessel velocity as well as the resistance on the this is the initial design that we have. The top one is frozen to design one and the bottom one changes. So both of these scenes are linked together. So change in one, uh, I mean, the if, if you modify the visualization in one, it gets reflected in the other. So over here, you can see the vessel being changed. Oh, sorry, the speed of the, the speed of the water being changed for the drag analysis and how it interacts with the front of the boat or the or the ship. So you can compare different designs with the baseline case and understand what is really happening with your design. So using the design manager, you can run design studies in a very effective and efficient manner, and you have an embedded post-processing tool that is the visualization tools, which is embedded within the tool, so you don't have to step out to another third-party tool to go ahead and post-process your results. We can also use the design manager on something like in this example of luxur luxury yacht where the aerodynamic loads can be critical. We can plot the wake and the streamlines by doing the parametric study of the wind direction on this yacht. Through this workflow, users with no CFD background can set up a simulation from CAD to solution within five minutes, taking all the best practices into consideration. The tests can be done on a full scale vessel, so no scaling errors occur as well. You can easily run design studies to find better designs faster, and this is what we have seen in the VTD template as well as the design manager. Next, I would like to move your attention to something that has been a very hot topic that many of our clients are very interested in simulating. That is sea keeping and maneuvering prediction. As we know, real model testing can be very expensive, ranging from $100,000 to $500,000. Also, the facility availability is also an issue, and you cannot quickly try different designs. Using the simulation capabilities in Star CCM Plus, we can get results of such complicated simulations in a very 
less computational time and in a very computationally cost effective manner. So let's dig deeper into this. Maneuvering is a dynamic response characterized to ships to command changes in the direction of travel through rudders, propellers and fins. It doesn't just mean turning the rudder and seeing what happens, but also refers to the course, lane or speed changing, dynamic positioning in waves. And we have a lot of applications in maneuvering. But what are we trying to accomplish with any maneuvering simulation? Generally, we are trying to minimize or find out the cost of doing a maneuver. That is the time to complete it and, and the amount of power required to execute the maneuver. Here we can solve for the forces using CFT and then try and figure out the equations of motion. So we have the marine tow tank test, which can be replicated in STAR using the reduced DOF method. We have the planar motion mechanism. We can simulate the rotating arm test, the pure yaw and the sway test as well. Here is another example of a direct maneuvering, which was accomplished by a customer executing a circle maneuver. Through digital simulation, unlike traditional tow tank experiments, we can extract a lot of useful data from our simulation. We can plot the pressure as well as any other forces on the appendages to check for structural requirements. This particular yacht has active stabilizers to keep the roll motion down as well as keep the vessel on track. Here we are predicting the trajectory while monitoring the rudder and stabilizer position as a function of time. Note that this vessel, it's under self propulsion. We are using the actuator disk to model the propeller. It greatly reduces the simulation time. These are the types of simulations you can do with our tools and extract a lot of engineering insight at full scale. Looking at how it would perform before you actually go ahead and build your physical prototype. This is another seaboat trying to do a circle maneuver in fairly heavy seas with incoming waves using its rudders. Here we plot its trajectory. We look at its pitch, roll, as well as predict its sloth and its speed and its power consumption. Beyond these type of standard tests, we can do a lot of non-standard simulations as well, non-standard maneuvering simulations, and let me take you through them. This was an investigative analysis of a narrow ship in a sea way that capsized due to the currents within this pen. We were able to simulate it in Star CCM Plus and able to investigate this accident and actually predict what happened to the vessel and why it cap capsized. You can do these kinds of complex simulations or complex analysis using our tool. Multi-body interaction model is a feature available in Star CCM Plus, and this expands the DFBI capabilities within DFBI's dynamic fluid body interaction capabilities, which we have within our tool. The model allows two free bodies to be linked together with either an axial, spherical hinge, or cantonary, or more lines, and a given body can have any number of linkages. In this example, on the top right. We have a wave power generation machine with seven floating bodies that are linked together using revolute joints. The full size machine floats on the surface of the sea and the hinges compensate for the wave motion as the sections move relative to each other and the hydraulic pumps drive electrical generators. And this is one of the many examples which we see here of our multi-body interaction capabilities within the DFPI model that we have within Star CCM Plus. We have an inbuilt structural solver within Star CCM Plus to model the stresses on the ship, ship structures, but also it's very easy to couple Star CCM Plus with other CAE tools like SimCenter 3D to optimize structural models, and this is done using co-simulations. Here's an example of a cargo ship transiting through an ice channel. In this example, we have a ship that is going ahead and maneuvering through uh, a channel and it's encountering brash ice. The ice channel has been cleared by an icebreaker just some time ago, and this is the assumption that we have made. We have modeled the ice fragments as DEM particles with friction between the ice and ice and ice and steel as well. So we can do these kinds of simulations as well. Next, here is an example of a boat being launched from a ramp of a platform. 
The vertical accelerations have been recorded at the front and the rear of the vessel, and we observe a great degree of conformity between the simulation and experimental data. Now next, let's look at a feature of 1D and 3D coupling simulations. Up to now, we saw the use of 3D CFT models to model the interaction between the hull, rudders, and the fluid environment. But what if we wanted to model and understand more than just the hydrodynamic performance by itself, but also look at the engine performance during a maneuvering analysis? This is possible through coupling with system simulations to find the best performing configurations under realistic mission profiles. Everything that we did until now is to know and understand your product performance. And at the end, the goal is being is, is to improve your design. Design optimization is the holy grail of simulation technology and SimCenter Star CCM Plus helps you do this in a systematic and a very cost efficient way. Star CCM Plus was built from the ground up as a fully integrated platform. This means that it has automation and design exploration at its core. So users don't have to patch together multiple tools to achieve the same outcome. By doing this, we have not only created a far better user experience, but we have also managed to completely automate and therefore simplify the entire workflow. This is achieved through a pipeline process, which can be replaced as many times as needed with just a couple of button clicks. This means that the user has the has built and tested their first prototype and any subsequent updates are seamless and automatic. In this study, we demonstrate that heats can be used to parametrically drive hull changes. Uh, in this example, it's with the friendship systems framework and over here by changing the hull to reduce drag and in turn reduce fuel consumption. This is an example to study the propeller performance. The challenge over here was cloud cavitation, which is a source of intensive noise and metal surface erosion. The objective here was to reduce cloud cavitation against reference design by varying the tip loading through blade pitch and vertical inclination variation. The solution over here was we used the CFT tool, Star CCM Plus, to capture the tip vortex dynamics to optimize blade tip loading. This simulation actually included the ship wake and rudder interactions as well. This was a difficult problem, but we could automate it all of it using heat optimization tab, which is within star CCM plus, and we modeled the controlled wake refinement meshing as well. The impact being the prevention or reduction of cloud cavitation reduced propulsive efficiency loss from the tip, uh, uh, tip vortex and reduced noise and risk of erosion. Uh, lastly, I would like to take you through some of the popular industrial examples which we which have used star CCM plus as their solution. My first example I would like to showcase is looking at the hydrodynamic performance. It's quite an interesting story over here of a company known as Wadzilla. Essentially, they had designed and ordered a fleet of 20 platform supply vessels, but the order was canceled and they were left with no buyers. The potential solution was to convert the PSV, the platform supply vessel, into a wind farm support vessel. However, they needed to operate the vessel at lower speeds, and this required higher power. Through running CFT simulations, they optimized the sponsons to mitigate the impact on the vessel performance, sustaining their original efficiency, and removed the potential of a large financial loss. Doing this study through physical testing in a tow tank would have been expensive and time consuming. And at its best, a good enough design would have been the outcome and not the most optimum solution. Moving forward, here is another example of predicting the aerodynamic performance for one of our defense customers of a vessel. Similar to the tow tank facilities, the wind tunnels can be very expensive, ranging from 20K to $100,000 to run an analysis. In addition to the cost, facility availability can be an issue. And also over here in a, in a wind tunnel, we are limited by the number of designs we can analyze. Using CFT simulations, um, these tests can be done at full scale with no scaling errors. You can quickly change designs to find better performing designs and that too faster. 
My last example over here shows a study into the propeller performance performed by man diesel and turbo. They were facing an issue with cloud cavitation with one of their propeller designs, and it was a source of intensive noise and metal surface erosion. Through running a design optimization study with SimCenter solutions, they were able to not only reduce cloud cavitation, reducing noise and risk of erosion, but they were also able to improve if efficiency by reducing losses due to tip vortices. These are just some of the examples to what's possible with our CFT simulation solutions. What's important to note that is our simulation tools are aimed at beyond doing and single beyond doing just a single scenario analysis. We enable our customers to find the most optimum solution coming back to our philosophy, design better designs faster. Lastly, you can always reach out to us and we can have a one on one call in which we can go ahead and understand your requirements from your standpoint. We can have a custom demo catering to your specific industry, and also we can have a deeper dive into the simulation tools and answer if you have any further questions. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. You can also visit our website where we have a lot of other webinars which are added regularly. Lastly, I would like to thank you for attending today's session. You can always reach out to me if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you.